Hey everybody, it's Jorik. Welcome back. I hope you're doing great wherever you are in the world. If you just found me, I like to talk about travel. Also, we're in Portugal, so I talk about a lot of things about Portugal too, but we're Americans living in Europe. And that's a lot of what this video is about. We meet a ton of people from the US that come here for vacations and we meet them all across Europe or if they're looking to move to Europe, um, there are many questions that they wanna ask about what life is like here living across the pond, so to speak, on the other side of the Atlantic. And I wanted to be able to set some expectations and be able to manage some of the uh, changes. I'll say some of these things that are different from the US to Europe may be looked at as shocks. I don't know if some of these are shocks, but just be able to set your expectations in a way that if you're going to come here for, let's say, an extended vacation, you know kind of some of the things and how things work here. Or if you're going to be moving from the United States to Europe, maybe it's work related and you're going to be moved over to Europe and starting off fresh somewhere. Or if you're coming for, let's say, retirement and you're going to be moving I'm not going to speak country specific, but I'm going to make generalizations across Europe when we've met with Americans from our, that live here or are retired all over. This is some these are some things that I want to make sure that if you're going to be coming from the US that you want to be aware of. And it's just again, some of these things are useful just so you're aware of because life is a little different over here and it's not a bad thing. It's a different thing. So let's go into some of the areas where I think uh, you may be shocked or you may be a little unsettled on how things are done. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. And, and again, I'm not going by certain countries across Europe. So let's start here. Smoking. A number one thing that we get from a number of friends that come is everybody's smoking. And when they say that, cigarettes, as opposed to, let's say, vaping, when it doesn't matter where we are in the world, we see a ton of people vaping. But yes, across Europe, it does seem like more people smoke at all ages, which in the United States, um, there aren't as many people smoking cigarettes as there used to be. I have no idea about vaping, but yeah, you're going to see a lot more smoking that goes on, as well as in restaurants, in clubs, in areas that maybe you're not used to or there have been laws that have prevented smoking in certain areas for years. Uh, that's something, it's a thing, you're gonna see it, you're gonna have, you know, walk past cigarette butts. It's just something that you need to be accustomed to when you're here in Europe. Um, water pressure, the next thing that comes up is, we've had friends that have been in Norway, Finland, so Scandinavia, Baltic region, um, Slovakia, like Slovakia, Czech Republic, uh, here in Portugal, where people have talked about, you know, what's up with the water pressure? Sometimes you get good water pressure, sometimes you don't get any water pressure. And I think it, it does change and it uh, ebbs and flows depending on where you are in Europe. Um, I will say, you know, when we stay in places uh, back in the United States, it does seem to be pretty standard. Water pressure is really good. Here, um, it's a little bit uh, up and down, uh, depending. And that's something you just need to be prepared for uh, when you are looking to vacation or you're looking to move here. Um, the next one is something, you know, people make comments to us as, where, you know, where's all the backyards? Where Where is the living space outside of the property, whether it be an apartment or a home? And Europe is very much apartment living um, or not so much home living. Yes, there are, you know, millions of people that live in homes, but more people live in apartments and so therefore there's very little common area most apartments here don't necessarily even have like say pools which may be more associated with u.s apartment complexes um, but that's just the way it is so people might have a small garden or a little terrace or a balcony where they're doing some uh, gardening or some planting uh, but you don't really have uh, backyards here it's just it's not something unless of course you buy a home which then uh, most likely you'll have some sort of a backyard to work with. Um, that brings me to the next point is that, you know, when people are looking at property and uh, across Europe is a question we get from Americans, doesn't anybody buy? Where, where are people buying property? Does everybody rent in Europe? 
And the answer is, in many countries, yes, renting is the preferable option to buying. I think the U.S. mindset has been, and it was ingrained in me too, that to buy uh, real estate and, and have equity in a property. Europe, a uh, different mentality. Uh, we have friends that live in Germany. They're my age. They're in their early 50s. They've never purchased uh, a home or an apartment, and they don't plan on it. It's just not something that they grew up with or part of the, the culture. So again, that can ebb and flow by country. But yes, most, most people rent. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to. If you want to buy a property and you can afford it, great. Um, but renting is more of a thing in Europe than buying. It's not the, the pinnacle or dream to buy something as it has been in the U.S. for a long time. Um, so with that, um, apartments versus homes, that's something, again, uh, that goes along with um, the renting over buying. Yeah, apartment living is where most people, and it, it, we have CEOs living in an apartment uh, two doors down from us, uh, as well as, you know, workers of all different levels. Um, apartment living is preferable and there's just more of it and it's more affordable than buying. And if you're looking at property throughout Europe, you will often see that. Unless you're in a rural or remote area, oftentimes um, you'll be looking at an apartment probably first and a home second. With that as well, so all of these are kind of point A, point B, point Z when it comes to renting, buying, and apartments versus homes is uh, we get comments often as like things seem so small in Europe when it comes to accommodations. And that's true. Um, again, most European cities compared to the U.S. are more compact. For example, uh, we lived in Phoenix, Arizona, very spread out terrible public transportation. So you really need a car to get from one side to the other. Here in Lisbon, Portugal, you can bus or train to get from one side to the other. And Paris, London, Rome, uh, Munich, uh, Athens, Europe is set up differently to where, frankly, their transportation is fantastic. I don't know if I'd really want to have a car because of the congested streets, but the public transportation, very good. And again, because of the how old Europe is and the cities are, people were able to do more with less. So you have smaller places. Often the opposite happens with friends of us, or friends of ours from Europe that go to the U.S. They comment on how big, like everyone lives in a palace, because homes are huge compared to the average home in. Europe and often the apartments are sometimes huge compared to an apartment of comp in in Europe. So things are just bigger in the United States, I think, uh, in many cases. So it's something that you have to get used to and adjust to. And I think, especially for those of you that are older in the workforce or getting close to retirement, downsizing is a thing that we all do. So um, getting a more compact place is important and it's interesting. We went from a large home to a small apartment and we found that we were able to do it. We had to purge some things and we had to make some decisions on what to keep and what not, but we're living just as well and we actually feel better about, you know, we don't we didn't need all the space. We were paying for a lot of space that we never walked into or used all that often. Now we're actually using the space and I think that's the big difference. Europe, uh, things are smaller, yes, but they're better about using the space that they have, I'll say more so than uh, us Americans back in the US. Long-winded answer, but I hope that explains um, things smaller versus bigger. This is something that, there is a big difference. Uh, everything in the US is open 24 seven. Now that's not true, not everything is open 24 seven, but not as many things are open 24 seven here in Europe. And that is a fact uh, across the, the, the European countries. There are some pharmacies that you will find in some countries that may be open 24 seven. Obviously places like hospitals are, uh, but uh, the question here is like restaurants or places to go visit. Um, yes, uh, grocery stores. Um, there are 
more options in the U.S. of things open all of the time in Europe, that's just not the case. It's rare. It's an exception to the rule where in the U.S. it's more so the rule. So if you're going to be moving over here, you do have to realize that things are going to close. And if it's late at night, you need to wait till the next day to, to pick up something. Unless, of course, it's a prescription and you can find a 24-hour pharmacy. So just something you have to manage. And again, trying to, with this video, manage your expectations if you're an American that's going to be moving over to Europe. And then next up, um, this is something I, I get often from people that I meet with and I see when we're on our trips is, does anybody in Europe use air conditioning? And uh, yes, they do use air conditioning and there are air conditioning units uh, in most accommodations, I'll say, hotels, Airbnbs, VRBOs, not all restaurants, but in Europe, uh, depending on whether you're in Northern Europe or Southern Europe, I think that also makes a difference. There aren't as many people that use AC, as well as, and I'll go the other way, not as many have heat, uh, heaters, uh, as opposed to the U.S., where pretty much every home and every apartment is has a capability for AC and heat. In Europe, that's not the case. I think it's becoming more and more standard, but it's still not the uh, not the European way. So it is something that you have to manage your expectation. And if it's very important to you to have AC or to make sure, then make sure you ha your accommodation has that. Or if you're going to be moving and you're going to buy something, factor that into the price of the sale so that you know that, all right, we're going to be buying AC because this place doesn't have it. If it's important to you, go get it. Uh, so that's something that's out there. Um, next up, and this is something that um, is near and dear to my heart, clothes dryers. Um, that's not something that is standard across Europe. Absolutely correct. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And it doesn't matter what country you're going to in Europe. You will often find a washing machine. Once in a while, you might find a washer dryer combo. I think most of them suck as far as the, driving, uh, the drying goes. It just doesn't work. But much of Europe is you're drying uh, clothes out on an old-fashioned clothesline in the back of your flat or in your house, or you have a little setup in your flat or your accommodation where you put clothes on a little line, a little contraption in, let's say, your bedroom, and you wait for them to dry. In the U.S., now whether you're an apartment complex, either your apartment has a washer dryer or the complex itself has a washer dryer or several washers and dryers you can use. And every home has a washer and dryer. You wouldn't think of buying a property that didn't have a washer dryer, let's say if it was fully furnished. In Europe, it's rare to find a place that has a washer dryer. Now you can go to a place called Leroy Merlin, which is, I'll say for those of you that are Americans watching this sort of the Lowe's or Home Depot version of the do-it-yourself home improvement, but they have appliances and you can buy a dryer, but not very many places across Europe are set up with the ductwork. And uh, so you may not be able to actually use a dryer even if you wanted to, to use one. It's just not a thing. Uh, so it's something to be aware of as you're moving or considering a move from the U.S. to someplace in Europe. Dryers are just not a big deal in Europe. Uh, so if it's important to you, get a house and make sure you have one or look for apartments that might have the ability to be able to install one if you want to be able to do that. This is something, the next one I think is, I wish Europe would start adopting this because uh, ADA, and what I mean by that, um, I hear from several people that come on trips to Portugal to see us or as we're traveling around and the sidewalks and accessibility for dis people that are disabled, particularly people that are in wheelchairs or trying to get around. Um, there is a big difference between how Europe views that versus United States. There is ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, so sidewalks, uh, ramps to get into venues, there are certain um, laws that are put in place, so uh, sizes of bathrooms, doorways, things like that, hallways, where you have to have um, certain accessibility requirements to be able to have a restaurant, a, a museum, uh, things like that. In Europe, it's just not the case. It's, um, 
very irregular. There are some cities with wide sidewalks, and I'll say flat sidewalks, uh, easier to get around than others. There are some cities that are, I would say, very difficult if you are in a wheelchair to get around. Um, so, uh, buses, I will say most buses in Europe do have the ability where they're, uh, they kind of lean on one side so that if you have a wheelchair, you can go from the sidewalk right and wheel onto the bus. Uh, so that's capable. Uh, trains are, are not something that if you're training a commuter train, they're not accessible uh, often. None of them in Portugal that we've been on are very difficult to get in and out of if you're in a wheelchair. In the U.S., that's not something that you think about. If you have a if you're in a wheelchair, um, you make an assumption that everywhere you go, there's going to be a big elevator. There's going to be everything that you need. Um, for accessibility. In Europe, I would take the position that nothing is going to be accessible. So you have to do research to find out if you're staying at a place or if you're moving to a city or you're coming on a trip and you want to go to certain museums. What's the setup there? Can you get in and around and probably look in the details for accessibility clauses to see what you can get into and what you can't and how easy it may be or how difficult it may be to get around in certain places in Europe uh, as opposed to the US where it's more standard. That is something that um, I hope the EU continues on but it's an area that for as much as the Europe, uh, Europe and the European Union um, I think is a leader in several areas, this is an area where I think they, they have room for improvement for sure. Uh, two last items for you. Um, using a pay bathroom. Uh, in the U.S., free public bathrooms, um, it's rare to come up across any place, and I don't know of a place that I can give you an example of where, you'd ha where I have ever had to pay to use a bathroom in the U.S. Here in Europe, it's common. Um, there are certain laws in certain countries or certain cities that even if you're not buying something at a restaurant, they can't... Um, say that you're not allowed to at least use the, the toilet in that restaurant. But many places, train stations, bus stations, um, often, even airport terminals, many of them uh, have pay bathrooms. So if you're in Europe, depending on what country you're in, you're gonna wanna have some spare change because if you have a tendency to need to use the restrooms, you're gonna to need to often pay for them. And that's just a part of, um, that's part of the deal. I will say opposite when Europeans go to the U.S. They're going, hey, we don't have to pay to go to the bathroom. They actually they love that. Um, but when you're American and you're coming to Europe, you have to expect this is going to be the standard. It may not be. You may go to certain places and you just lucked out. You went to certain public areas and you didn't have to pay to get in, and that's great. But in every country we've been in, we've been in... Uh, I think all but four countries in, in Europe, in every one of them, we've had situations where we've paid along the way. We haven't had a situation where we've gotten through uh, the full week or however we've stayed someplace without having to pay for a bathroom. It is what it is. It's something that you have to get used to and just, again, manage the expectation of coming from the U.S., and moving or traveling to Europe. And then lastly, this is one, this is one that's funny to me. And the funniest one, so I saved it for last, is several people come up and talk about, um, you know, I don't get a free refill on my coffee. You know, I, I paid for coffee. What do you mean I got to keep paying to get another espresso or another latte or another Americano? Or if I buy a soda at a restaurant, even if, let's say, it's a an American chain, a McDonald's or something like that, uh, I can't go back for refills? What do you mean? This is ridiculous. Um, so, yes, that's something that is a big difference between Europe and uh, America is that in Europe... Um, you pay each time for coffee. You pay each time for another soda. So you're not getting refills, you're getting new. In the US, if you want to load up on 
bunches of refill of, of Coke and Pepsi, you, you could at a restaurant with no issue. Or if the uh, server kept coming over and serving you a coffee, you could go through probably a pot of coffee if you wanted to, if, you're, if you could handle that, um, and just pay for the, a single cup of coffee. In Europe, it's just not done that way. So that's something that is uh, a stark difference. That's a shock sometimes because people um, have this expectation, I think, when they're coming from the U.S. that, eh, you know, we're just going to get um, coffee and they, they don't realize that they're going to be spending more on coffee than they, re than they realized. Or they sit and they, when they fly back to the U.S., they go, gosh, we, we go through a lot more coffee because... We're not. We're used to getting refills, and we don't realize that you know the waitress or the server had come around several times to refill a cup, versus having to pay each time. It's just something different between um, living in the United States and living in Europe. So it's a long video here, but I wanted you to be able to see and be able to manage through some of the expectations of what you get in the U.S., what you get in Europe and some of the differences between the two. So I think it's great to be in the US, I think it's great to be in Europe, and it's also fun to work through some of the differences uh, between the, uh, the, two, uh, the two areas uh, on the planet. As always, thank you so much for, for taking the time to watch the video and enjoy your travels.